Were we cheated by JP Morgan, we, the people who invest in precious metals, gold, silver, precious metal mining stocks, there's a big trial going on in Chicago right now of 3x JP Morgan traders. All types of incredible information are coming to light. I want to cover that with you in this video, but then I also want to talk about what's the future look like? Is this still going on right now? All types of things are coming to the surface. Could this spell the end of manipulation within the precious metals market? Let's dig in right now. We might get cheated by JP Morgan, but I'm not trying to sell you anything. All I ask is if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, and you can share this video with anyone you like. Now, three guys are on trial and the government, the prosecutors, have a cooperating witness in this trial against the three JP Morgan traders who apparently systematically over a more than 10 year period executed 50,000 trades where they cheated the market by engaging in a process called spoofing. Let's just look at some of the quotes from this Bloomberg article that I read this morning on the subject. Our job was to do whatever it takes to make money. Using spoof trades to manipulate prices for all sorts of precious metals was an almost daily method for generating profit, said John Edmonds, who worked as a trader at the bank until 2017. Quote, Everyone at the time did it on the desk and it worked. So the three guys on trial, Michael Novak, Greg Smith, and Jeffrey Rufo, on Tuesday, the jury was told this, that the team wasn't just buying and selling precious metals. No, but systematically cheating to help themselves and their top clients over the course of the decade that Edmonds, the cooperating uh, witness, worked as a trader. Now remember, this is all being told under oath. The truth is coming out. There are also additional cooperating uh, witnesses who are going to come to light in this trial as the prosecutors are going for a racketeering from 2008 to 2016. Traders on Novak's desk engaged in spoofing as a core business practice doing it more than 50,000 times over a decade, the three, if convicted of all charges, could face decades in prison if they are indeed guilty of this, which it sure looks like they are, unfortunately. Uh, I think they deserve to spend some decades in prison. I'm going to share with you my thoughts as to whether I think this could still be going on at the end of the video. But first, a brief description of spoofing. I have a more in-depth video. You can find that on my channel. But spoofing essentially is the process of creating artificial demand or artificial supply to encourage or scare what would be an otherwise normal market participant to make a decision they wouldn't otherwise make. At least that's my definition of it. Now, a simple example of spoofing. Let's say you're a farmer, you wanna buy a new tractor, you hear about an auction going on in the neighboring county, there's gonna be a really nice tractor going up for auction, you go to the auction, there's you and two other people. You think, oh, hey, cool, I got a pretty good chance of getting this tractor. It's not going to get bid up into infinity. Um, you're waiting for the auction to start. Suddenly, a bus pulls up. It doesn't say J.P. Morgan on the side of the bus, but it is a J.P. Morgan bus. And lo and behold, 50 people get off the bus, and they're all running over to look at this tractor, and they're pointing at it and acting like they're interested, but that's the fact. They're not really interested, okay? J.P. Morgan is also the guy selling the tractor, and he had these fake people, this fake illusion of demand show up to scare the real buyers into paying more for the tractor. That's exactly what J.P. Morgan would do when they were wanting to sell gold. 
they would want to sell gold at a higher price than the market. So they would put through a flood, I mean flood, of fake orders on the buy side, which would scare the uh, natural buyers in the market into paying more, taking action sooner because they're afraid. Look at all these people coming in to buy. That's how they manipulated the gold, silver, and many other precious metals markets. Some final thoughts as to whether this could still be going on. We have to accept and recognize one thing. JP Morgan still sits on top of the precious metals power structure throughout the world. Uh, the LBMA, all these different associations, they are very, very powerful within the precious metals markets. Number two, they have trading desks, not just in the United States, but also in Europe, London, and also in Singapore, Asia. They have a model that's called follow the sun, meaning they're able to trade these metals and control the market on a 24 hour basis. So they very well could still be trying to manipulate the precious, precious metals markets. However, everything is coming out in the open now. So that gives me reason for optimism. Okay. People are going to be watching like a hawk. Now, what goes on with JP Morgan? I think we may be getting to a point where this manipulation could be coming to an end. One thing for sure, it's very unfortunate that the bank did this over the years that they did it, okay? That's bad, it hurt us, it hurt a lot of other people, but we can be optimistic now with more transparency as to what's going on, that the situation will be closely monitored and that we could be in for brighter days within the gold, silver, and other precious metal sector. One thing for sure, I'm going to be here with you through it all. I appreciate you joining me in Ron's basement. And until next time, you be well.